I, I think there's two really important components when you're first getting started. And there, this advice I wish I would have had, you know, because I, I think my, my situation was a little different being kind of born into the work and into the movement and it being really a part of like my familial, you know, heritage and all that. But I'd say for people today starting out, um, I say just like, I mean, for real, I have really underestimated the value of, of being informed in the past and like actively pursuing the continuation of our learning and pushing the boundaries of, of just your mind all the time. And, um, I think the climate crisis, I, and I think you're learning. I think you're, you're, you're the first learning you should do if you're trying to get into the climate space is to read books that aren't just about climate. They can help you understand the greater context that the climate work exists within. Because, you know, it's one thing. And, and again, everybody has their own, own niche or their own, you know, way to to apply their voice or to get involved. But like, in in my eyes seeing the climate crisis solely as like an issue of carbon emissions or solely a scientific issue like you can zoom in as far as you want in any one direction but i think it's important to understand the landscape it exists within um the different systemic issues that it plays and it connects to and in addition to that i would say uh cultivate a community you know cultivate relationships with people that can stand with you because the only Hard, the only thing harder than standing up to a crisis as big as doing it alone. And uh, whether that's a, an online community, whether that's through your, your peers or your friends, your mentors, parents, teachers, like whoever it is, build those relationships that can help hold you through that space. That's the only reason I made it as far as I have, because I've had those relationships, both to hold me through my growth and my learning and my experience, and also like hold me accountable and check me on my biases and like all that. So. Yeah, those two things are really important, is being informed and being connected. I would say when I when I began to learn about rap music and listen to hip hop and understand the nuance and the depth of the culture being more than just a, a, an entertainment space, um, I saw how it has always been a space and a tool for empowerment, for uh, shining light on voices and stories that needed to be heard, um, on reflecting and, and, and being a little radical and being going against the grain, you know, and, and uh, speaking truth to power. Like that was very clear to me. I think that properly the climate event, like uh, like a big demonstration that was like this is a this is a moment in climate organizing was in 2011. Um, and it was at the time that Our Children's Trust, which is a is a organization that does legal work, you know, suing on 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 the basis of of you know preservation of the atmosphere and of the climate. They uh, they began this rollout of lawsuits of cases in all 50 states and in countries all over the world. Um, and there was this mass mobilization of people that was that was under the, the moniker like the I Matter movement was um, started by this by this kid back in the day named Alec Lourdes. And uh, my, my, my fam and the Earth Guardians, we organized one of the biggest marches in the world at that time for this demonstration in Colorado, in Denver. And I just remember it was it was the first time I'd seen that many people getting together for this because before then everything was local community organizing at the most we had a few hundred people out for any one thing but mo most times like a tight group of like 15 16 of us you know in the community out of different events uh but it was that was a big moment that i really remember eric guardians began in, in the 90s as an accredited high school in maui hawaii my mom started it my siblings were all attending the school and uh the whole vision of it was to create an alternative learning space for youth to use their voice in their education, where they were going to school every day to make a positive difference and to uplift their stories and their voices. And since then, it's expanded and grown, and it is now, you know, over uh, hundreds of different Earth Guardian crews all over the world and um, over 40 countries, I think. And we are at a 
point right now where we're, we're changing a lot, you know, and I have, I, I, my relationship with the organization has gone from being this a very public spokesperson, the face of the organization in a lot of ways, and then realizing that like anything that is built on the image of one person or the voice of one person is, is not cultivating longevity um, and is not really what this is about. We have just in the last two years started a really strong indigenous initiative within the organization that specifically focuses on nurturing, incubating ideas and uh, investing in, in indigenous youth.